Mm -hmm. It's just that thing, isn't it? Hey. Well. What's that? What do you want to hear? Well, the, the economic system we have at the moment is it's designed to, to favour employers. And if obviously if there's mere unemployment, the cost of labour uh, is far cheaper because if there's full employment, uh, workers can demand higher wages. And uh, obviously, you kind of just sack people because there's less people to employ. Mm -hmm. So, the, so that had to go first of all. And that's one reason the un the employment, the unemployment that there is these days is there. And the other reason is obviously to undermine the power of uh, trade unions that were really, really powerful in the mid 1970s, uh, quite powerful before that too. Mm -hmm. But the reason the the reason that that the uh, economic system had to go, was a t it was a threat to the kind of interests of the employers and the uh, factory owners and uh, new businesses and everything like that. So, unemployment was a, is something that's been deliberately created. It's not just, it's wrong to look at the problem uh, in context of and the individual people. That is a factor and I'm sure that some people could try harder, some people are trying too hard or whatever, but for this economy to work there has to be a certain level of unemployment. And say that everybody, a minor medical occurred and everybody that was unemployed at the moment managed to get a job. What would happen was uh, the economy would end up shedding jobs so you would have still have a similar level of uh, unemployment because under this system there just can't be a kind of full employment. It, it is just impossible because it just wouldn't work in favour of the employers like it was meant to. Um, and that's one of the reasons I favour a different system. But I'll not get into that now. <laughs> that, that's a bit because this is only a wee video. Uh, <laughs> Wait. Um, next one is something we've talked about in all, right. uh, which I always find quite fascinating when right. you're talking to different folk. Right. Uh, it's the dif different versions of skint. Right. Like, like you could be, you could be talking to somebody and then they say, "Oh, I'm pure skint. I've only got a hundred pound left <laughs> till I get paid um, seven days later." And like to to me and probably to you as well, mm -hmm. uh, a hundred pound uh, to have a hundred pound left a week would be absolutely amazing mm -hmm. because like to date I've never been in that position. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have some people that um, like to them that's little money to them, mm -hmm. whereas little money like my version of skint would be like when I've got either no money or raiding my copper jar or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's quite interesting to see like what different folk have kind of learned to cope on. Mm -hmm. um, so what what do you think and what have you came across? Or? Well, my version of skint is having nothing to eat and having about six pence in your wallet. That is definitely skint and uh, having no hope, uh, having no money for uh, at least a week or maybe even more than that and having to rely on other people to feed you and having to rely on other people to, to buy you stuff and to, to make ends meet, that is what I consider skin mm -hmm. and it's obviously uh, relative that a lot of people as you were saying, look, if, you're only get, if they only have a £100 to spend in it for a week that is skin to them because mm -hmm. they are used to having a higher amount to spend, that yeah. is, um, and that is a kind of relative kind of, a relative kind of skintness, uh, if you want to use the word skintness, <laughs> it's not really a word, but it'll be, um, the thing is, to, to some people having £500 a week will be skint, mm -hmm. you would have to be the, the sunny the sonny a lawyer or something, the sonny the attorney general or something to, to think that. Uh, and that's only skint in their kind of view of things. Mm -hmm. Maybe no skint so much, but disadvantaged. Uh, yeah, they, they feel that in their, uh, what their kind of position in life, that they should have mere. Mm -hmm. It's no maybe skint is the wrong way to put it. 
skint was having nothing, but mm -hmm. like, to some folk having a hard pound. They became they're no destitute, like the true skint people, but they feel that they should be doing better, and maybe they have made a mistake in their finances, and maybe they think that the system the, has wronged them in some way, like maybe they've lost their job, maybe they've their wages have been cut or something like that. It's and they'd be quite right. Uh, if you're kind of like a skilled worker, uh, you should have a pound to spend in a week these days, especially if you've got a family. Isn't it very much? We bills to pay and maybe the likes of car insurance and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. they they definitely feel disadvantaged, and I can see the the, the reasonableness in that, but. Uh, the likes are somebody thinking, I've got a thousand pound a week, I'm skint, I'd say, piss off. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, right. Fifth question is regarding the stigma of being teetotal. The right. stigma here in this country mm. uh, of if you're a person that decides not to drink alcohol, mm -hmm. um, what do you think about the stigma about no drinking alcohol? Well, there's a massive stigma attached to that. I personally, I'm not a teetotaler, but I don't drink very much, but I'm just, uh, I've never really been into it, and uh, plus it just didn't really deal with me all that well. Uh, I'm not going to that either. That can be another video. but. Uh, <laughs> This is again related to the thing I was mentioning at first about uh, the idea of the free country. Mm -hmm. That of course, nobody, if you don't drink, nobody's going to put you in prison, nobody's going to shoot you or anything like that. But if you don't drink, if you decide you don't drink, you just it's unlikely you're going to have the same quality of life as somebody that does, especially in your social life particularly in your social life and uh, if only non-drinkers are watching this I'm sure you'll be familiar with like uh, night suit and they're saying to folk uh, can you get me a coca-cola and say uh, what <laughs> you know what vodka and it's you know I don't drink I say what what do you mean what, do you, what are you talking about uh, I, I was reminded me was it chewing the fat well they're in the pub or something and uh, the guy doesn't drink and then they keep saying take a drink and he's like, no, and then he keeps saying, which rang were you taking? Mm, and then go in and they say, oh, go on, and they say, yeah, 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 there you are. <laughs> it's like, if you drink, it's like you're a member of an exclusive club, you're, you're one, of the, one of the people, one of, one of the accepted, one of the, you're, you're living life the way life is meant to be lived, according to, to some people that drink. Like, no, everybody's like that. Some drinkers are, that I can uh, respect, uh, non-drinkers' decisions not to drink, but unfortunately I would have to say it's quite few that think that in that way. Mm -hmm. And I've heard drink, uh, like, drinking breaks up friendships, it can break up marriages, it can break up probably kind of workplace partnerships maybe even it can it seems it might sound like a wee tiny thing like some folk drink some folk don't which is the big deal but I've never understood how some folk feel so passionately about drinking like if you want to drink great I have no problem but mm -hmm. some folk think if you don't do it you're some kind of a pariah you're some kind of as if you'll, they'll get the non-drinking disease <laughs> <laughs> like, I think drinkers can be great, they can be funny and everything like that, but I just don't understand the passion of some of them towards folk that don't drink. It's like, mm. it's not like there's lives at stake. The way they go on, it's like lives are at stake. Aye. And that's something I've never understood. Can you just, some folk drink, some folk don't. Can't that no just be fine? Aye. But in this country, that is a, a pipe dream. Well, everybody, that's all the now, uh, and you're free to put any comments down uh, at the bottom, in agreement or disagreement, or suggesting things that you might want me to talk about in the future. 
Uh, if you want to see Mary Ava, you can just comment about that too. <laughs> uh, but one thing, there'll be no abuse, because there'll be no fuss, we'll just delete it. And so there's no point putting it down. So there'll be none of that. Uh, uh, don't waste your bread. No, don't waste your bread. <laughs> but kind of civilised criticisms are welcome. Mm-hmm. Is there any suggestions? And uh, we'll see you probably maybe in a week's time or something like that. Mm-hmm. Cheerio, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>